Countless species have come and gone throughout Earth's history, leaving behind a complex maze of life that has revolutionized our planet's ecosystems. Among the numerous extinct creatures, some have captivated our imagination owing to their enormous size, while others have horrified us with their scary features ranging from huge marine predators to giant millipedes. Join us as we explore 10 such animals that may have posed a substantial threat to humans if they had survived. Number 10. Deinonychus Deinonychus, which means terrible claw, was a dinosaur that lived during the early Cretaceous period, roughly 15 million years ago. If this predator had persisted, it might have presented a significant threat to our species for a variety of reasons. Deinonychus was a fearsome beast, reaching up to three and a half meters in length. Its 410 millimeter skull had formidable jaws lined with roughly 70 curved, blade-like teeth. Paleontologist John Ostrom's fragmentary reconstructions of the skull described it as triangular and wide, allowing it to administer crushing bites to its prey. Deinonychus's enormous hands, with three sharp claws on each forelimb, added to its threatening appearance. Its rear foot's second finger had a sickle-shaped claw, which was most likely used for attacks. Although no skin impressions have been discovered with Deinonychus fossils, it is commonly assumed that dromaeosaurids, such as Deinonychus, were feathered animals, adding a terrifying element to their look. The discovery of fossilized Deinonychus teeth alongside those of the ornithopod dinosaur Tenontosaurus suggests a predatory interaction between the two species. Multiple Deinonychus skeletons, including four adults and one juvenile, were discovered in close proximity to Tenontosaurus fossils in a Montana quarry. This finding suggests that Deinonychus hunted and dined on these plant-eating dinosaurs, in addition, recent research on juvenile Deinonychus fossils has highlighted fascinating ideas. Because of the mobility of their shoulder joints, juvenile Deinonychus may have been capable of flying, adding another dimension of danger and agility to their hunting abilities. Deinonychus had a walking speed of around 10 kilometers per hour, according to an examination of trackways discovered in British Columbia's Gething Formation. Its biting force was found to be between 4,100 and 8,200 newtons, exceeding that of living carnivorous animals like hyenas and rivaling that of similarly sized alligators, according to biomechanical research. According to geological data, Deinonychus lived in floodplains or swamp-like environments. It's intriguing to visualize the prehistoric environments where this apex predator roamed, ambushing unsuspecting victims with lightning-fast attacks. Deinonychus would have been a strong and lethal animal if it had survived alongside humans. Its size, frightening appearance, razor-sharp claws, powerful jaws, and even flying skills would have made it a relentless and effective predator, posing a tremendous threat to human existence. Deinonychus, thankfully, is now extinct, surviving only in our imaginations and the fossil record. Number 9. Host's Eagle an amazing species once soared through the sky in the lush forests of New Zealand's South Island. If it had not been extinct, it might have made our favorite tourist sites the most perilous locations on the planet. This remarkable creature was a host's eagle, an extinct species of eagle that was one of the biggest known genuine raptors. In both length and weight, host's eagle dwarfed even the largest extant vultures, making it an awe-inspiring predator. Females were substantially bigger than males, with estimations ranging from 10 to 15 kilograms, while males varied from 9 to 12 kilograms. Female host's eagles might have weighed more than 16 and a half kilograms, according to comparisons with other eagles from the Australasian area. While the wingspan of host's eagle was rather modest for its size, extending up to 2.6 meters and perhaps exceeding 3 meters in certain cases, it nonetheless equaled the wingspans of giant female eagles of other species. This modification enabled the host's eagle to easily navigate New Zealand's thick scrubland and woods. Contrary to common perception, host's eagle did not acquire flightlessness, but rather large wings to adapt to its wooded habitat. Examining the wing and leg remnants of host's eagles reveals fascinating connections to extant eagles, including the harpy eagle, Philippine eagle, and Stellar's sea eagle. As an adaptation to forest life, these current eagles, like their extinct predecessors, lowered their relative wing length. 
Hast's eagle's talons were equivalent to those of the harpy eagle, indicating a powerful hunting skill rather than a scavenging existence. Hast's eagles had muscular legs and enormous flying muscles, allowing them to lift off with a forceful leap despite their size. These eagles possessed long, wide tails that exceeded 50 centimeters in length to compensate for their limited wing area. Female specimens grew to be up to 4 meters long, with a height of around 90 centimeters or potentially even taller. Ancient cave art depictions of Hast's eagles reveal a pale head, leading to the supposition that they had bald heads or shorter feathers on their heads than the rest of their bodies. However, the reasons for this are unknown, although bald heads in vultures provide thermoregulatory functions. Hast's eagles may not have needed as much thermoregulation as giant tropical vultures since they lived in chilly, temperate woodlands. Hast's eagles' eating habits were simply amazing. These eagles used their huge beaks to rip through the internal organs of their prey, which included big, flightless bird species like the moa. The prey would then pass away due to loss of blood, and because other large predators were absent, a host's eagle might have monopolized a single enormous victim over several days. According to recent research, host's eagles used feeding strategies more comparable to those of vultures than other eagles. Following a slaughter, they would dive their heads into the bodily cavity to consume their prey's important organs. This modification enabled them to take on considerably larger creatures than themselves, ensuring their survival in a harsh environment. However, the host's eagle became extinct due to the extinction of its major prey. Number 8. Sarcosuchus Sarcosuchus was a species similar to that of a crocodile that lived in the rivers of Africa and South America during the early Cretaceous period. Its name translates as flesh crocodile. This prehistoric beast, a distant relative of modern-day crocodiles, posed a significant risk to any unlucky people who may have come into contact with it. Imagine a crocodile on steroids since Sarcosuchus was one of the world's biggest crocodile-like animals. Determining the size of these ancient monsters is no easy feat, but scientists have devised a clever method. By measuring the length of the skull from the snout to the skull table, they can estimate the creature's total body length. They found that the Sarcosuchus had the largest known skull, which was 6 meters long. Using this measurement, researchers estimated the individual's body length to be a mind-boggling 9 to 10 meters. And to make matters worse, its snout vent length reached a terrifying 5 to 7 meters, equivalent to the length of a fearsome saltwater crocodile. With this information, they calculated its weight to be a monstrous 8 metric tons. That's enough to give even the most daring explorer nightmares. Anyone would have shuddered at the sight of Sarcosuchus. Its large snout, in contrast to today's narrow-snouted crocodiles, suggested a generalist diet. S. Imperator, unlike its crocodilian cousins, lacked interlocking teeth, suggesting that it hunted huge terrestrial animals. Imagine it creeping over prehistoric landscapes, its mighty jaws tightening around the bones of dinosaurs that lived in the same area. A predator of that size and strength would have terrified any creature unlucky enough to cross its path. Sarcosuchus was not only massive, but it dwarfed other infamous ancient crocodiles in size. It was more powerful than the Miocene Ramphosuchus, the late Cretaceous Danosuchus, and even the ferocious Miocene Purosaurus. It was the biggest horror of its day. Sarcosuchus and its reign of terror, thankfully, came to an end millions of years ago. However, this huge predator's frightening legacy serves as a reminder of the horrific wonders that previously roamed our Earth. Number 7. Megalodon once, in the deep blue abyss of our ancient seas, a terrifying monster controlled the waters. What is its name? Megalodon, which literally means big tooth, was a giant shark that lived roughly 23 million years ago. If it were still present, we would never have gone surfing. Imagine a shark so massive that it would make even the great white shark shiver in its fins. Estimates of Megalodon's size vary, but they all agree on one thing. It was massive. Some claim these marine monsters grew to a staggering 20 meters in length. Consider a beast the size of a school bus hiding beneath the surface, ready to strike at any time. To put this in context, the typical length of a giant great white shark is only 6 meters. Megalodon would have towered above these little animals. Megalodon clearly reigned as the real leviathan of the oceans. 
Megalodon's teeth are the most prevalent remains of its reign of terror. These triangular wonders were massive, serrated, and sturdy, standing almost seven inches tall. They were the biggest teeth of any known shark species, offering a sobering reminder of this apex predator's fury. Can you imagine coming across one of these huge fangs and knowing the beast it belonged to was capable of swallowing you whole? The existence of four unique types of teeth in Megalodon's frightening jaws is shown by its dental formula, which reveals the presence of four separate types of teeth in its fearsome jaws, anterior, intermediate, lateral, and posterior. Megalodon had a jaw that could reach a jaw-dropping two meters broad, with over 250 teeth across five rows. These serrated fangs were ideal for slicing flesh and bones with ease, making any unfortunate prey a terrible nightmare. But Megalodon was more than simply a fearsome beast because of its size and fangs. It had a global distribution, with fossils discovered all over the world. No part of the ancient oceans was safe from its wrath. Europe, Africa, America, and Australia. It grew at latitudes ranging from subtropical to temperate, with temperatures ranging from 1 to 24 degrees Celsius. Talk about adaptability. Megalodon's hunger was insatiable since it lived in a variety of maritime settings. Nothing was immune from its predatory prowess, from shallow coastal seas to marshy lagoons and deep offshore areas. It was a roving monster, always on the lookout for its next meal. Adult megalodons are said to favor offshore locations, leaving shallow waters for smaller predators. Megalodon faced a world of change during its reign of terror. Beginning in the Oligocene epoch, a cooling trend resulted in the final glaciation of the poles. Geological events affected marine habitats by altering currents and precipitation. The Central American Seaway closure and alterations in the Tethys Ocean impeded the flow of nutrient-rich waters, perhaps affecting Megalodon's food supply. It's intriguing to consider nature's delicate equilibrium and how the changing world has affected it. Number 6. Megatherium Megatherium was a genus of ground sloths that lived from the early Pliocene until the end of the Pleistocene epoch. But don't be fooled by the name sloth. These were not cuddly creatures. They were massive beasts that would have posed a huge threat to mankind if they had survived. During the Pleistocene epoch, this elephant-sized giant roamed the pampas region of southern Bolivia. It weighed a mind-boggling four metric tons, stood at two points at one meter in height, and measured six meters from head to tail. Consider the dread of coming upon a monster as huge as an Asian elephant, but with a dangerous demeanor. The skeletal structure of Megatherium was as strong as its size demanded. A massive pelvic girdle and a strong tail provided the creature with the stability it needed to forage at heights beyond the reach of other herbivores. Megatherium sustained its massive weight by rising on its muscular hind legs and using its tail as a tripod while dragging down branches filled with the most succulent leaves with its curved claws. Due to the impediment of its strong claws, this sloth, similar to a modern anteater, walked on the sides of its feet. While Megatherium was essentially a quadruped, its trackways indicated a startling talent for bipedal locomotion. Megatherium was a force to be reckoned with for reasons other than their size and mobility. Their tiny cone-shaped mouth and prehensile lips suggested that they were picky when it came to plants and fruits. Megatherium had the smallest snout of any ground sloth, and it had the keen palate of a genuine connoisseur, meticulously picking its vegetation like a polished epicurean. The lips were important in this process, presumably assisting in the distinction and selection of the most attractive nourishment. Furthermore, the fusion of key bones in Megatherium's neck hindered its ability to protrude its tongue, implying a precise method of eating. This animal's teeth were notably hypsodont, a testimony to its gritty, fibrous diet. Their teeth were engineered for optimal shredding efficiency, with interlocking V-shaped biting surfaces and a roughly square cross-section. Their mouths resembled a nightmare meat grinder, pulverizing everything unfortunate enough to be caught in their teeth. Megatherium previously inhabited South America's forest and grassland ecosystems, particularly the weakly wooded regions centered around the pampas. 
These species, adapted to temperate, dry, or semi-arid open environments, controlled their territory until their demise approximately 2,000 years ago during the Quaternary Extinction Event. So, although we marvel at Megatherium's enormous size and scary qualities, let us also breathe a sigh of relief that these monster sloths no longer represent a threat to human survival. And now it's time for today's subscriber pick. This vintage photo of a massive ape was sent to us by one of our subscribers. The man standing besides the enormous primates seems like a child in comparison. This is likely what we would have looked like in comparison to a few of these creatures within our journey so far. If it were a colored image, we'd assume it was a still from the infamous movie franchise, Planet of the Apes. Do you think this is an authentic photo? Number 5. Arthropleura Arthropleura, a genus of massive millipedes, inhabited the prehistoric depths of North America and Europe almost 200 million years ago. These animals were the biggest terrestrial invertebrates yet discovered. Thank God we escaped those perilous times. Consider coming across a monster that measured a staggering two and a half meters in length. Tracks as wide as 50 centimeters have been discovered, leaving behind a scary path. But hang on to your hats, because recently, a fossilized exoskeleton, a remnant from the ancient terror, was discovered, measuring a mind-boggling 55 centimeters in breadth and a frightening length of 3 meters. This gigantic millipede, weighing 50 kilograms, was a force to be reckoned with. What caused Arthropleura to expand to such gigantic proportions? It turns out that the prehistoric environment had a greater partial pressure of oxygen, allowing these creepy crawlies to grow in size. Furthermore, the lack of big terrestrial vertebrate predators allowed Arthropleura to travel freely, dominating the Earth with its massive presence. Fortunately, we no longer have to deal with these huge crustaceans. But what distinguishes Arthropleura from your regular millipede? To begin, their exoskeletons were ornamented with well-developed tergites which had three lobes. Consider a creepy crawly armored tubercles with terrifying surfaces. Only a little oval plate at the front has been detected. Let's speak about legs now. Arthropleura was thought to have been diplodocus, which means they had two pairs of legs per plate. This ancient horror has three pairs of ventral plates in addition to its fearsome leg army. These plates may have even functioned as breathing organs, ensuring that Arthropleura was constantly prepared for a terrible battle. Contrary to popular assumption, Arthropleura did not restrict itself to coal forests, but instead led a more autonomous existence. Trackway fossils have been recovered in open regions, and the dreadful millipedes continued to leave their imprint long after the Carboniferous rainforest collapse. Arthropleura's demise was most likely connected to the drying up of the equator, demonstrating that even the most powerful species may succumb to changing times. So, we can finally be assured that these old evils are no longer present. Number 4. Smilodon the notorious saber-toothed predator Smilodon roamed America throughout the Pleistocene period, which lasted from 2.5 million to 10,000 years. Most of its fossils were discovered in Brazil. Before you start imagining your typical tiger, let me emphasize that Smilodon was not related to tigers or any current cats. Now, let's talk size, shall we? This ferocious feline reached a scary weight of 466 kilograms and stood at a towering height of 120 centimeters. In other words, it was a monster among felids, a real-life nightmare in the flesh. Imagine a predator more robustly built than any cat you've ever encountered, with four limbs that would make Arnold Schwarzenegger jealous. Its upper canine teeth are slender, fragile, and freakishly long. Smilodon's jaw boasted a gaping maw, perfect for precision attacks. These cats were the apex predators of their time, and they were armed to the teeth, literally. Consider a fearsome cat keeping its victim immobile with its muscular forelimbs and delivering a bone-chilling bite as Smilodon's hunting methods. Scientists disagree on how it delivered that deadly blow. But one thing is certain, it was an expert at dispatching huge herbivores like bison and camels. It was a tenacious hunter, easily adapting to new prey in South America. Smilodon's ambush-style assaults were well complemented by forests and deep flora, allowing it to strike dread into the hearts of unsuspecting prey. The complexity of Smilodon's environment becomes clear when we explore it further. 
Its brain showed patterns comparable to current cats, indicating that it had a better sense of hearing, sight, and limb coordination. However, its tiny eyes and less forward-facing orientation distinguish it from current analogs. Smilodon was skilled at hiding in deep forests. Did I mention its incredible leaping ability? That's true. This predator could leap with pinpoint accuracy, making it even more dangerous in pursuit of its victim. But, like all nightmares, Smilodon's reign came to an end. When most of North and South America's megafauna perished around 10,000 years ago, this scary predator followed suit. The reason for its disappearance is still unknown. Some believe that its dependency on huge prey, climate change, and competition from other species sealed its demise. The reality, however, remains obscure, allowing us to speculate on the fate of this horrifying animal. Number 3. Quetzalcoatlus Quetzalcoatlus was such a fearsome creature that it may have spelled the end of humanity if it had survived. It was a genus of Ajdarkid pterosaurs that controlled North America during the late Cretaceous era. These huge beasts were the biggest flying creatures ever to grace our planet. They were a force to be reckoned with with their gigantic wingspans and long, rigid necks. The name Quetzalcoatlus was taken from the Aztec deity, the feathered snake god Quetzalcoatl, and it definitely lived up to its tail. When it was discovered in 1975, experts calculated its wingspan to be a mind-boggling 16 meters. Quetzalcoatlus's massive wings allowed him to command the skies, casting terrible shadows on the unwary land below. Estimating the body mass of these enormous creatures is a difficult endeavor because no other species has a similar size or body layout. A recent study, however, indicates larger weight estimations ranging from 200 to 250 kilograms. The mere immensity of these figures is enough to freeze one's mind. According to skull material, Quetzalcoatlus had a pointed beak as sharp as a knife. Previous reconstructions have used jaw fragments from another species, which resulted in a blunter nose. The precise shape of its skull crest is unknown, lending an unnerving aura of mystery to these already menacing creatures. But what about their flying abilities? Could they soar across the sky with terrifying grace? Mark Witten, a bold British paleontologist, investigated allegations of huge pterosaur flightlessness. He found that Quetzalcoatlus could fly at remarkable speeds of up to 130 kilometers per hour based on thorough calculations of wingspan, body weight, and aerodynamics. Imagine a giant plummeting from the clouds at such incredible speed. Furthermore, another researcher, Habib, proposed a maximum flying range for these winged terrors of 13,000 to 19,000 kilometers, assuring that no one would be safe from their dreadful presence. With its gigantic size and magnificent wingspan, Quetzalcoatlus most certainly had a diet to match its adventures. While specifics regarding its diet are still being contested among experts, Quetzalcoatlus most likely preferred medium-sized animals. It might have eaten a wide range of creatures, including fish, tiny reptiles, and potentially other flying animals. Quetzalcoatlus, with its sharp beak and powerful jaws, would have been well-equipped to grab and consume its unsuspecting prey, demonstrating its ability as an airborne predator in the prehistoric sky. Imagine what would have happened if Quetzalcoatlus had continued to traverse the world. No one would have dared set foot inside a helicopter. Number 2. Titanoboa This colossal snake, with its huge size and lethal reputation, presented an unthinkable peril to any living being that crossed its path. This colossal predator made even the most daring anaconda look like a garden snake in contrast. Titanoboa, a terrifying name, was a monster of enormous dimensions. It roamed the Earth around 60 million years ago during the Paleocene period. Consider a snake so big and incomprehensible that it would make even the most daring herpetologist scared. Titanoboa was estimated to have reached lengths of up to 10 meters and weighed 2,500 pounds. Behold the dread of a snake capable of dwarfing a school bus and easily coiling itself around a mammoth. One cannot help but tremble as we consider the look of this ancient snake. Its gleaming scales, which were the color of nightfall, added to its frightening presence. The sight of its sinuous shape, moving with captivating grace, would send chills down any onlooker's spine. It had a force that went beyond the natural world, a diabolical grace that belied its lethal goal. 
Titanoboa thrived in the Paleocene era's warm and humid jungles. Its habitat, which is now Carajon, Colombia, was a safe sanctuary for this massive snake. The area was covered in lush tropical woods with a broad range of flora and wildlife. Titanoboa thrived in an ecosystem characterized by towering trees, lush vegetation, and vast water systems. Fish, turtles, and other reptiles were found in abundance in the marshes and rivers. Titanoboa reigned as the apex predator among the lush vegetation and murky waterways, terrifyingly dominating its prehistoric domain. Titanoboa's distinct attributes and characteristics distinguish it from any other serpent that has slithered across the annals of time. Its enormous size attests to its dominance in the primordial realm. It was the biggest snake ever to exist, towering over its current counterparts. The mere prospect of coming into contact with this terrifying beast in the wild causes nightmares. Titanoboa had a strong appetite as well as a distinct palate. Researchers think that this slithering creature became a predator after adapting to a diet of fish. The head exhibited adaptations such as specialized tooth morphology and palate shape. Titanoboa had a great banquet of aquatic food to feast on, thanks to its habitat's wide river networks and plenty of fossil fish. One might ask how such a monster might have posed a threat to mankind if it had survived to the present day. Consider a world in which Titanoboa slithered stealthily through deep forests, seeking its prey with planned accuracy. Humans, frail and helpless, would have been powerless against this ancient monster. Its appetite was limitless, and its hunger would have led it to seek larger and more difficult prey. But don't worry, Titanoboa has long since slithered into extinction. The passage of time and the evolution of our planet have obliterated its existence from the Earth's fabric. We can find refuge in the idea that we will not have to face this terror in our everyday lives. Number 1. Spinosaurus The Spinosaurus stood out as a serious threat in the dangerous world of prehistoric predators. This dinosaur, whose name literally translates to spine lizard, lived in North Africa during the late Cretaceous period, which was almost 99 million years ago. If it had survived, humanity would have been in grave danger from this horrific beast. Consider watching a Spinosaurus, which grows to be up to 15 meters long. Its huge size alone sends shivers down your spine. Recent research suggests that it may have been roughly 8 metric tons. Nonetheless, a creature of this size would definitely strike dread into the minds of anyone unlucky enough to come into contact with it. The Spinosaurus had a small snout and straight conical teeth with no serrations. It had six or seven teeth in the front of its upper jaw, followed by twelve more prominent teeth in the maxillae. This unusual configuration produced a gap between the front teeth and the massive teeth in the lower jaw, allowing for a terrifying bite. The tip of the snout had been extended, and a little crest had been added to the region in front of its eyes. Estimates of its skull length range from 1.7 and 5 meters to 1.6. But it wasn't simply because its head was frightening. Spinosaurus had a long, strong neck that curled into an attractive S-shape. It had broad shoulders and huge, powerful forelimbs with three clawed digits on each hand. The first finger, or thumb, was very powerful. Its back was also studded with unusually long neural spines, which served as the foundation for its characteristic sail. The diameter of these spines was more than ten times that of the vertebral bodies from which they extended. Scientists are still debating the role of the Spinosaurus's sail. Some believe it was used for heat regulation, while others believe it was used for exhibition, making the beast look even bigger and more terrifying. Whatever its purpose, the sail contributed to the creature's overall dread. One of the most remarkable elements of Spinosaurus is its eating habits. Its extended jaws, conical teeth, and elevated nostrils imply that it might be a fish eater. This notion is supported by the presence of fish scales in the rib cages of comparable Spinosaurids. Evidence implies, however, that Spinosaurus was a flexible predator capable of opportunistic hunting and scavenging. It might have been a generalized predator, similar to giant grizzly bears, with a preference for fishing. There is also evidence that it preyed on pterosaurs, which were flying dinosaurs, as proven by a tooth buried in a pterosaur bone. We are all aware of the T-Rex, a fearsome predator. It was one of the biggest dinosaurs, spanning 12.3 meters in length and weighing up to 9 tons. 
However, it paled in contrast to the sheer size of the Spinosaurus, a real prehistoric monster. The Spinosaurus, with its incredible length and weight, gained the distinction of being the biggest known carnivorous dinosaur, casting an intimidating shadow over its T-Rex cousin. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.